Hello and welcome to the 2019 Tips and Tricks session for Parts and Features. So hopefully a lot of you will find some useful tips and tricks throughout this session. We're going to start straight away by looking at some elements within Sketch. So the first tip I want to highlight is when you click on a plane, we get a little flyout manager here that allows us to select uh, commonly used items for what we've selected. So here I'm going to use it to start a brand new sketch. Now as soon as we go into Sketch, one of the other elements I want to mention is the S key. So this shortcut key works and is context sensitive. It can be customized whichever environment you're in. So if you're in part, you get feature customization, assembly, assembly customization, drawing, etc. And we're going to look at the Sketch element right now. So if we want to customize that, all we need to do is drag and drop a command directly onto that toolbar. It's really handy because we can get access to all those commonly used tools straight away at the end of our mouse. So I'm going to start with a circle and I just want to highlight another element within here as well. So if we're creating uh, a sketch item, when we hover over the origin or indeed any other element within an existing sketch, we'll see a little yellow symbol which indicates an automatic relationship is going to be created. Now that's fine for the majority of the time but sometimes we actually don't want a relationship to be created. So if you hold down the control key that stops automatic relations being created. Now for what we want to do I do want that automatic relation so I'm going to add that on like so. I'm going to use the S key again to grab hold of the dimension tool and I'm going to dimension that circle at 27.5. So we'll place the dimension down and give it a value. Now we know that in the later versions of SOLIDWORKS the sketch scales to match the first dimension. You can see here that although I've got a diameter dimension it's showing in the vertical orientation. If you do want to change that just right click on it and say display as diameter and that will change it for you. If we go back into our circle tool, another quite useful tip is that if you're within any of the sketch tools that have a variety of different options, so for example within circle we have a normal two point circle and then we also have a perimeter circle, if we want to swap or toggle between those you can just hit A on the keyboard and that will toggle you between the entity type that you've got selected. I'm going to create another circle there and we'll make that construction uh, and give it a dimension. If you click on elements within a sketch, a little flyout appears here and we can grab hold of key things from this flyout. So I'd like that circle to be construction geometry. Some of you may notice that if you move that disappears. So if you hit the control key, you can get that to reappear. So if it does disappear, just hit control and that'll come back. So uh, don't worry if you lose that. We'll go ahead and add another dimension to that. Now what I want to point out here is if you actually move the dimension away from a vertical orientation, you can have a horizontal or alternatively the leader style that we specified earlier. So there we'll make that 38.6. Now the next thing I'd like to do is draw a line out from the center. And you may think, okay, what's exciting about that? Well, there are a couple of different ways that we can draw lines within SOLIDWORKS. So the first way would be to use a click click operation. So if I click for the start point and click for the second point, you'll see the line continues and I can continue on my uh, drawing of that line. But if you want a single line, we'd need to double click here to end that line. So that's one way you've got to do it. The second way would be to press and hold the left mouse button and drag the, uh, drag the line downwards we get a much uh, more predictable behavior with that and it can speed up the entire operation because we're getting what we want straight away. If we go back into Smart Dimension, I'd like to dimension the angle of this line. So if I click the line and the center point here, I get a little triad that pops out and it allows me to select an additional entity to use as the reference for the angle. So again, that can speed up the creation of what we're doing and it means I don't need an extra horizontal line to give myself an angular dimension. If I click on this line, instantly I'll get a point-to-point -point dimension. 
What I want to point out here is the uh, symbol that appears at the end of my cursor. You'll see it's the symbol of a 1980s mouse by the look of it with a right click button highlighted in blue. So the default functionality we get for dimensions is if we're very close to a line on a point to point, we'll get a point to point dimension. If we move out to the right, we get a vertical dimension. And if we move up to the top, we get a horizontal dimension. Now, I don't want to place my di dimension right next to the line. I want to move it over here somewhere, but I'm not getting my point to point dimension. So what you can do is right click at this point. It locks the focus of the dimension. I can place that elsewhere uh, and then apply my dimension. And I've got it away from where I want it to be. So that can be quite helpful. We'll just use the circle tool again and automatic relations and we'll add on another circle over here at 5.1. Holding down the control key allows you to drag and copy entities if you want to. And again here we're going to use a point, 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 so a three point selection method to give us an angular dimension between those circles. Holding down control and selecting two entities allows us to make them equal or add any relationships between things. And we'll go ahead and we'll just place a final circle at the intersection point of these two lines. Now at the moment you can see I'm not getting an intersection relationship, I'm getting a coincident relationship showing. What you can do here if you don't get the relationship type that you want, just hover over the secondary entity and then move back to the intersection and that will give us the appropriate intersection dimension that we want. And we'll finish that off by creating an equals relationship between the two. That's our sketch pretty much done. Uh, so I'm going to exit out of that at the top of confirmation corner towards the right hand side. And I'm going to go back into my design library and grab hold of an extra sketch and just drag that into my model. I'm going to place that down and then reposition it just with a drag and drop like so, so it's locked into position. Now in the previous sketch I exited that by using confirmation corner at the top right. We can also exit the sketch at the top left here or you can double click and that will exit our sketch as well. That only works if you've got instant 3D on. If we just re-edit this sketch and go back into it, what you can also do in the later version, so 2018 and forwards, is you can hit the D key and then use the exit sketch here. So that just brings confirmation's corner into the center of the screen for you. Okay, so let's move on to some feature uh, tips now. Firstly, if I select a line, use my S key and start an extrude, you'll see I don't get much of a preview here at all. So the system isn't aware of what I'm trying to do. Uh, you'll see it's picked up an individual contour of the sketch rather than the sketch in its entirety. A much better workflow is to pre-select the sketch, then start the extrude tool, and we get much more predictable behavior uh, in terms of what we're seeing with the previews and what's actually going to happen. What we can also do is right click whilst we're in uh, any property manager and we'll get access to any of the end conditions that are available in the property manager on the left hand side. So in this particular example, I'm going to choose mid plane. Now, one of the other things I want to mention here is to notice the mouse cursor symbol on uh, my pointer again. So you'll see that has got a little equals on a right click. What that means is if I right click now, that's going to accept the command and close the property manager on the left hand side. I need to modify the thickness of this to be 15. So I'm just going to type in 15 and press enter. My preview updates and my cursor is still showing uh, enter as a right click. If I move my cursor, you'll see that goes away. So sometimes to speed up your operation in SolidWorks, you just need to be aware of what the mouse pointer does. Now here I can right click again uh, and I will get OK available to me, but that's two clicks instead of one. We'll come back to that in a moment. So if we use our S key again, pre-select, select extruded cut, right click to access the end conditions through all in both directions. You'll see the cursor is displaying uh, the green tick, right click and that's enter and we can move on to what we need to do next. If I pre-select a face here, 
this toolbar appears, which allows me to create sketches, edit sketches, or also we can customize this toolbar as well. So I've customized mine to have the whole wizard on it. So we can start the tool directly from there. Now a lot of you maybe use whole wizard on a daily basis, the same types of holes over and over again. What you can do is you can create favorites within here. So instead of creating the uh, or choosing the same settings every time, we can actually select from a drop down uh, favorite. I'm going to go in and position those holes just right on these points here. Right click to say enter and we'll just rotate a little bit so we can see a bit more of the model. Now, what I'd like to talk about now is a few more sketch tools uh, or sketch tips that we've got in the system. And the first one I want to mention is if I start a sketch on a face at the moment, I've got my system currently set up to automatically orientate the component normal to that sketch face. From a new user perspective, this can be quite helpful because we're not sketching uh, with the model skewed at an angle. So if you do want to set that option, if you go into options, use the search bar at the top, just type in normal and then under system option sketch you've got auto rotate view normal to the sketch plane on sketch creation and sketch edit and just tick that on. Uh, so that can be quite a useful option to help you. Now the next thing I want to mention is some different workflows for convert entity and offset entity. So if I've got a face pre-selected and I choose convert entities, the default behavior for that is to take the perimeter of the face we've selected and convert those entities. Now, what I'd like to show you is that if we start the convert entities tool first, we actually get a property manager for this. So I can choose a face and then I can say select all inner loops. So that in addition to the external edges of the face is also getting all of the inner loops. If I just clear the face, I can now only get the inner loops uh, and start to perform some of the bits and pieces that I want to do next. What I'd like to do is just put a single line in, so I'm using a click and drag method there to place that line like so. We're going to move on to offset. So offset as a tool does pretty much what it says on the tin. It offsets lines in particular directions. If I pick a line, the dimension box is active. So currently that's set to 10. I don't want that to be 10. Uh, I'd like that to be a slightly different value. So I'm going to choose one millimeter and press enter. My preview updates. If I want to change that to two or three. We can just, you know, key in those values at any point. If I right click, I can also get the options for a bi-directional offset. And if I right click again, I can also specify that the base line is going to become construction geometry. So all of the options that are available to us in the property manager on the left hand side are available on the right click option as well. If I select base construction, right click, say OK, we get exactly the behavior that we want. So now that I've got those uh, offsets there, let's perform an offset on these entities here. So we'll take those three and we'll have a one mil offset. Add those on. The next tool I want to talk about is trim. I think we mention this every time, every time we do a tip and trick session. But within the trim tool, if you hold down the shift key, you can actually extend lines. So again, that can be quite useful. Now, new for 2019 is some extra options towards the bottom of the trim tool here. So the first one is keep trimmed entities as construction geometry. And the second one is ignore trimming of construction geometry. So I'm going to leave both of those off and just show you the default behavior for the trim tool. So if I trim over a line, you'll see it trims back to the closest and the little red dot appears. If I run over that red dot, it will reinstate the trim line. So if I grab hold of those two, like so that's the default behavior if i toggle on keep trimmed entities as construction geometry whenever i trim anything it converts that into construction geometry if i toggle on ignore trimming of construction geometry even if i run over construction lines it doesn't trim back to those so that can be really helpful uh, depending on the types of trimming operations that you're doing so here i'm just going to go through and trim down some lines here that we don't need. 
So we'll trim all these entities back and we've left those new settings for 2019 enabled. Makes it quite a lot easier to work with the trim tool and get the desired result that you want. Now at the moment it can be a little bit difficult to see whether we've trimmed all the entities correctly. So what you can do is turn on shaded sketch contours on the toolbar and that will show you the contour that has been created uh, by the trim entities that you've generated. Next for us is to use that sketch so we're going to use the D key to exit the sketch and then we'll use the extrude tool just to extrude that up by. The next tool I want to talk about is fillet. So if we select an edge here, we can get access to the fillet tool. And again, the dimension box is active within fillet. So I can type in two mil straight away and it's going to change that value over. If I pick an additional edge, we can get this selection uh, tool up here, which allows us to grab hold of any common entities that are between each of the items. So here if I go through some of the options I can see if any of these are useful to me and then select a multiple set of different edges. If I pick an additional edge within this it can grab hold of any of the tangent edges uh, that I might like to use, any additional settings that we want. We can remove edges from here if we want to as well. Next what I'd like to do is create another sketch on this face so I'm going to use my uh, selection tool here, pick the face again, I'm in a sketch, I'm going to use convert entities to grab the extents of everything and then we'll just put an extra line over the top here and then I'm just going to use a center line between those two points and let's make that perpendicular. I'm going to trim all of that up like so and we'll create a dimension between the end line and that point we'll just make that 22. Now I don't need any of the elements at the top of this sketch here at all I can happily remove all those. If you right click under selection tools the default behavior is for you to have a box select that can be a bit tricky to get those entities so if you look under here we've also got access to lasso select so we can use this very much like we can in Photoshop uh, image editing software just to draw around a bit easier and then just selectively delete all those items. We'll then add on an extrusion here at 5 millimeters, and we get to this point. Now within the fillet tool there's also another way that we can use it so if I start the fillet tool here and use a full round fillet you'll see the first box is selected blue so if I pick this face you see the mouse cursor shows an enter button if I press that it automatically jumps me to the next box and again the same is true if we go to the third box and then right click is enter so it's always worth keeping an eye on what your mouse pointer is showing because that can really speed up uh, what you're doing in SOLIDWORKS. Finally what I'd like to talk about is the breadcrumbs so we mentioned this in some of the main sessions earlier if I select a model uh, face you'll see the breadcrumbs appear in the upper left hand corner. Now breadcrumbs are on by default but we'd like those at the end of our mouse if you're using 2018 and previous you can just hit the D key and those will appear at the end of your mouse Alternatively, if you want them to appear at the, the end of your mouse all the time, if you go into the tools options, type in breadcrumbs, just click on the options here, you can select show breadcrumbs at mouse pointer, and then when I click on a face, the breadcrumbs appear right here. So if I wanted to edit that feature and make that 10 millimeters, for example, I can do that directly from the breadcrumbs. Okay, Alex is going to take us through assembly tips in our next video, but if you want a summary of all the tips you've seen today, just watch till the end and there's a slide showing all of those for you. Thanks for watching.